In learning objective three, we're going to look at the stock markets. Uh, where do we buy our stocks? We said uh, in the last session we buy bonds at an investment bank. Um, we can't uh, go to uh, go on. Well, the start, you're starting to see some hints of buying bonds online. You can do that a little bit these days, but in the, for the most part, you used to have to visit an investment bank face to face and buy these things. Uh, now you can start to buy some things online, treasury bonds and uh, and also some corporate bonds. Stock mar markets have been much more electronic over the years. Um, two primary stock markets we deal with, uh, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, and you see them pictured here. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange has a physical location with several uh, large rooms, 11 Wall Street in New York, and the NASDAQ has kind of a showcase, showplace, uh, tourist-type building in uh, Times Square, New York, and basically no trading goes on in that, whereas uh, active trading goes on inside the New York Stock Exchange facility. Uh, there are two types of primary transactions that occur at these markets. Primary market transactions, which we said in session one, is uh, the original sale of securities by the firm in an IPO format. And secondary market, or where you and I play, we buy our stock uh, stocks on these exchanges. And these are uh, stocks that have previously been uh, issued by the corporation and traded actively among investors. So we generally operate on both of these exchanges. Obviously, there are more. There are regional exchanges. There are international exchanges where we can trade now. But these are the primary two and two of the largest uh, exchanges in the world. New York Stock Exchange can do 40 to 50 billion. Both of these uh, organizations do 40, 50 billion dollars in annual trading volume. They can do, uh, or average daily, I'm sorry, and they can do average daily um, uh, share volume of up to and sometimes exceeding 2 billion shares a day. So 40 billion, 50 billion per day in trading volume and 2 billion shares per day. That's a lot of shares being transacted across these two exchanges. Um, IPOs ebb and flow over the years, sometimes uh, $20 billion, $10 billion, some years in low years, $20 billion, even higher in some really uh, crazy years where there are lots of at mergers and acquisitions and uh, and initial public offerings going on. Um, listed companies, around 3,000 on both of these exchanges. Um, let's talk about the difference between dealers and brokers. Dealers work on the NASDAQ. They're agents who buy and sell out of inventory, much like a book dealer or a car dealer. Uh, brokers are simply matchmakers at the New York Stock Exchange. They arrange transactions of stocks between investors. So they match someone who wants to buy with someone who wants to sell. Uh, on the NASDAQ, the dealers uh, are going to buy at the bid price and they're going to sell at the ask, just like the bonds in the previous session. So bid is buy, uh, ask is sell, and they pay, play that bid ask spread just like the bond dealers do. So think of it um, almost like a bookstore. It's very easy to relate to your uh, finance book, for example, uh, the initial price of your finance book might be as high as $200, $160, $200. Uh, at the end of the semester, you sell it back to the bookstore. Sometimes you can get half if you sell it early. Sometimes they'll give you as low as something like $20. And then next semester, they'll dust that cover off and put it back on the shelf and put a used sticker on it and sell that book back to the uh, public for $100. So if they uh, bought it from you for let's say 50 is a good average price, and they sell it the next semester for 100, the bid ask spread is $50. So that's how the bookstores really make a lot of their profits. I've done some consulting for the bookstores, the campus bookstore, and they've told me point blank, they make all the bulk of their money, the bulk of their net income is on used books. And that's why you see uh, large ads uh, all, all over the downtown area during the uh, fall, during the end of the semester time periods, because they're looking to get those used books back so they new books back so they can play the bid ask spread and, and turn them into used books the next semester. Uh, brokers are matchmakers. Brokers work on the New York Stock Exchange. Again, uh, they don't have any inventory. They don't have, they don't buy and sell uh, from their own accounts. They facilitate trades. So think of the New York Stock Exchange as matchmakers. Think of the uh, NASDAQ as dealers who sell from inventory. On the New York Stock Exchange, we have about 1,400 members who own seats there, um, personal seat licenses. They used to actually buy the seat, and they would go from anywhere from a million, two million, all the way up to $4 million, $4 million in uh, 2005. Uh, nowadays, they ha they've changed that model, and they have personal seat licenses where you have to pay a fee every year, uh, somewhere in the forty dollars to $60,000 uh, arena nowadays. 
maybe slightly higher, uh, but you pay that PSL if you want to have a seat on the exchange floor. Uh, four types of members. Commission brokers are the largest in number, specialists, floor brokers, floor traders, lots of people still walking around on the floor, but it's becoming more and more electronic as the years go by. Commission brokers are members of the uh, large investment banks, and uh, they try to get the lowest possible price for their customers, 500 commission brokers who make a commission on each trade uh, for their company. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, as you see some of these companies, Goldman Sachs, um, sit right on the floor. A specialist... Um, are assigned dealers just for small sets of securities. They're also called market makers in the NYSE lingo, uh, where they make a market and they assure and try to maintain a fair and orderly market for, with good prices for the securities assigned to them. So specialists are market makers. Um, Floor brokers help the commission brokers, uh, too busy to handle certain orders themselves, so they're kind of assistants. Uh, they used to be called $2 brokers, and they're becoming less important as this New York Stock Exchange becomes more and more electronic. A super dot system um, is used more and more where you can uh, send an order directly to a specialist. So again, once again, you see uh, more and more technology entering the New York Stock Exchange, fewer and fewer people being needed. Floor traders uh, independently trade for their own accounts. They sit on the floor, they trade, and they pay that PSL each year, uh, fewer and fewer in number because it's becoming more and more difficult to make a profit short-term trading on the floor. Um, what we want to do when we're operating, all these folks are operating, they want to have order flow and orderly order flow. If you, if you want to stick an adjective in there, they want to keep things orderly. Uh, millions of investors, tens of thousands of institutional investors are customers of the uh, NYSE. Uh, again, not unusual to go two to three billion shares uh, per day on each of these exchanges. We also have specialists down on the floor. Uh, they uh, operate in front of their posts, clerical employees down there also, and uh, commission brokers down there. So lots of people still on the floor, but again, starting to uh, decline in number with more and more technology like Archipelago, which was a company, an electronic trading company, purchased uh, in 05 by New York Stock Exchange. John Thane thought it was time to, uh, time to get uh, the New York Stock Exchange more involved in technology, so he bought an integrated Archipelago. Uh, since then, they've also acquired uh, Euronext, one of the European exchanges, and now they're called the NYSE Euronext Incorporated, and they trade publicly on the NYSE as a public corporation. NASDAQ operations are a little bit different. Again, in this building in Times Square, there are no trades going on. It's just more of a come on in and learn about the NASDAQ um, kind of educational facility, uh, see how the NASDAQ operates. Um, it's an electronic network. It used to be National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotation System, introduced in 1971 as a computer network and still is, and was ahead of the New York Stock Exchange in technology regards, but uh, New York Stock Exchange is catching up. And again, there is no one site. Uh, these are traders located all over the world, hooked up electronically via computers. Um, whereas, the, whereas the MYSE has a um, physical space, uh, NASDAQ, a multiple market maker system, uh, rather than a specialist system used by the NYSE. And NASDAQ is broken into three tiers. Uh, larger companies, about 1,200 of them, are uh, called the um, NASDAQ Global Select Market, GSM. So some of your larger, more actively traded companies are, are in the GSM portion of the NASDAQ. Then you have the global market, about 1,450 companies that are a little bit smaller. And then uh, the remaining 550 are in the NASDAQ capital market. And they're the really tiny firms that have just maybe jumped on board the NASDAQ. And as time goes on, they move up. As the company grows, they move up through these tiers. Uh, if you want to get these quotes, you can get uh, NASDAQ quotes um, in near real time, level two quotes, they call them, uh, simply by being an active trader with a company like a Fidelity or a Charles Schwab. Uh, generally, they give those quotes, access to those quotes for free. Uh, to their active investors. And it's becoming more and more prevalent on the internet when you go into Yahoo Finance and other sites to get a quote. Used to be, they used to be 20 minutes delayed. Now they're getting to be near real time. So the investor has a real advantage knowing this near real time price.
Who's still listed on the NASDAQ? Well, a lot of companies that have been around for quite a while now. As we said in session one, Apple uh, being around since 1976, 1980, probably before uh, early 80s till they became public. But uh, they went on to the NASDAQ and they stayed there. Some of the old days, companies used to move from the NASDAQ to the NYSE in a prestige move. These companies who have stayed on the NASDAQ are happy where they are. So NASDAQ's giving them great service. Typically, high technology companies, um, Yahoo, Dell, Microsoft, Intel, Apple, and Starbucks says they have decided to stay uh, happily placed on the NASDAQ exchange. The final thing we're going to do in this chapter is learn how to read a stock market uh, listing, stock market report. These used to appear every day in the Wall Street Journal. Now they appear within seconds on your uh, handheld phone or your uh, laptop, desktop, netbook. You can get these quotes in near real time instantly. So we have to know how to read them. Uh, going left to right on this uh, final slide, you'll see uh, previous close. That's the previous stock price uh, closing yesterday uh, at the end of the trading day. Next column you'll see, next two columns you'll see 52 week high and low. So the high for the past 52 weeks and the low selling price for the last 52 weeks. So this uh, particular stock, which is Costco, the example I've given you here, was up as high as 75.23 and as low as 54.85. Now tomorrow, if uh, Costco goes to 75.24, that will show up as the new 52-week um, high. Uh, the, the stock name and the stock symbol, you must know that stock symbol if you want to, some, some call it a ticker, uh, you must know that ticker if you want to trade these stocks yourself. So if I want to go into um, fidelity and trade my stocks, I must know the stock ticker symbol beforehand. And you can go certainly look that up on the internet or right in the uh, investment banker's uh, site right there live as you're getting ready to trade. You can do a stock symbol search. Uh, DIV is the dividend. That's the annual dividend for the company. In this case, 64 cents. And so uh, you get one fourth of that quarterly typically. Uh, typically, these companies pay these dividends on a quarterly basis. So if you had a 100 shares of Costco, you get a $64 check at the end of the, by the end of the year. In total, you'd have, what is that, $16 per check each quarter. Uh, yield percent is dividend yield. We said in an earlier slide that that is D1 over P0. So ending uh, an annual dividend, excuse me, annual dividend divided by stock price, closing stock price. And that gives you a dividend yield in this case of 0.9%. Uh, P.E., we learned from session two, three, that is uh, price earnings ratio, price per share divided by earnings per share, 27.63. And you can compare this to other retailers uh, in the industry. You might compare Costco to Walmart uh, and, and some other companies. And um, in this case, P.E. of 27.63 is quite high, uh, is high relative to the industry, and it's high relative to the general standard and poor's, which uh, standard and poor's 500, I think averages in the 15 to 16 range. So this has quite a high price per share relative to the earnings per share that you get from Costco. The volume is stated in hundreds, and that's volume for the uh, prior trading day. Uh, in that case, uh, if you go inter intraday, you might see uh, an intraday trading number, but generally it's yesterday's uh, trading. Volume from the previous day, 68,570, and I put that into 100. So it's 6,587,000 shares traded in the day. Still a, a very large quantity of stock traded in, in that one company. Uh, close is the closing price, 73.28. So it's not quite uh, a high, but it's getting close to its 52-week high, a couple bucks away. And the final column, net change, this stock has gone up uh, four cents from yesterday. So yesterday's closing price was $73.24. Uh, that concludes our discussion on uh, common stock valuation. In this chapter, we've learned to do a couple things, the various ways to value a common stock. And we presented three models. There are, again, other models that can be much more robust, uh, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow development. Uh, terminal pricing and then discounting uh, those cash flows back to today is a much more rigorous way to value a stock. But uh, that will save that for a more intermediate or advanced finance class. We presented you some simple models of common stock valuation. We've looked at uh, in, in uh, Learning Objective 2 some features of common and preferred stocks 
And objective three, we've gone over the two primary stock markets that uh, most investors use uh, in the U.S., uh, that being the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ and some of the peculiarities of each. Hopefully you've enjoyed this chapter on stock market valuation.